Okay, welcome to ICT Integration Workshop 3. Today we're going to be looking at presentation tools. Um, as always, there'll be a discussion board that follows this, but today we're going to go over general presentation. I'll talk a little bit about IWBs, look at some alternative tools, and then we're going to look at Poll Everywhere and Prezi. And I'll be doing a slightly different method. So, first of all, contents delivery. So, at the moment, we're in a lecture style classroom where I'm teaching and you're listening. It's the same as most classes. Uh, it, it, most of the time the students are just going to be sitting there bored. Um, so what you need to do is find a way that's actually going to engage the students. Now at the moment I'm facing you, I'm talking to you, but there is no content that I'm actually delivering to you. There is nothing up on my board at all. So number one, I'm not prepared. Right, so for example, if I'm going to go and turn and keep doing my talk, what are you doing while my back is to you. Okay? For a start, you notice you can't even read half the stuff I've written. I actually need to move out of the way. So you either need to learn to write like this, or if you're left handed, so on. Or, and also the other thing you notice is when I've got my back to you, you can't hear what I'm saying. So this style, very poor, very, very poor method. Right. So think about your presentation sense. The better organized you are, the better it's going to go. Now, we're going to do something just a little bit different. Um, what I'm going to actually now them do is demonstrate Prezi. So the rest of my talk is actually about these stuff. I'm actually going to do Prezi. And to make it harder, I'm actually going to build the talk as we go through. So let's get started. Prezi, by the way, is an online uh, presentation tool. Uh, I've already set one up here. It's blank. So I'm actually presenting the same way as I would the, on the interactive whiteboard, and you would, I would expect that you would do this beforehand. I'm doing this now, so not only am I giving the talk, you can also see what I'm doing. So I'm first of all, I want to pull in some files. I want to pull in the stuff I want to discuss, and what it's doing is it's it's downloading all the pictures that I want. All right. So you remember how hard it is to set up a a, 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 a presentation uh, using a PowerPoint well this is a lot easier overhead projector that one goes there tablet uh, interactive whiteboard oops I do not want this one delete that one goes to there whiteboard yeah right so this is a Prezi um, and what I've done is just dumped in pictures now they could be files they could be uh, screenshots they could be information whatever once you've got your wall, so this is actually, if you can imagine, a giant wall where you can have as much as you want or as little as you want. Once I've got what I want, I'm then going to go path and go, I want to talk about that and then that and then that and then that and then that, 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 that. Right, very simple. Now, because the pathway is already designed, I can actually now go back. I can just grab any one of these and move them and it won't make any difference. The path is still the same. If I really want to, I can actually spin these things around, which gets really annoying, makes you dizzy and so on. I can make them really big, I can make them really small. All right, so I'm just going to make it quite small. All right, so there's my Prezi. I've just designed a Prezi in the middle of my presentation. Now, let's go. So I'm going to continue presentation now. Okay, so back in the day, there used to be blackboards. Bad things about blackboards are they can make a lot of chalk dust. Your hands get really dirty. Um, it's quite a disgusting way of doing it. It's a lot of fun and you can do nails down chalkboard, um, but very rare to find blackboard. Basically, I talk, you listen. Very hard to have all the stuff up there beforehand. Whiteboard, not much different. You're still writing. You still notice the girl is still facing the board. She can't see what the people are doing. Next one. Overhead projector. So now we're actually starting to get to a point where you can actually have the stuff presented beforehand. I don't know how many of you have been through in high school uh, your teaching when the, the, the teacher would pull out the overhead, the notes from the overhead, put it down. And they'd say, when they come in the next day, so what we're up to, overhead 42, bring out 43, put it down, off you go, you'll start copying, they start talking. Notice it's spinning now. Next we had digital projectors. So this is a bit of a different digital projector. But basically, the thing you notice now is the guy is blinded. The only guy that can see here is Arnold Schwarzenegger in the background because he's got sunglasses on. If you've got a digital projector that's aiming at your face, you won't be able to see. 
Okay, so digital projectors, whilst they're good, get out of the way. Okay, so this is now starting to get to a little bit of an in-between one. This is called a Mimeo. Um, and basically, it's a type of interactive whiteboard where basically, um, and you can see here, this is the receiver. I use a pen to write like I would any other way, but the receiver is actually picking up what I'm writing and it's recording it on a computer. Now, if I really wanted to, I can actually be project projecting that onto a different board. Uh, or I can just be recording it. So if you're really struggling to understand how to use an interactive whiteboard, but understand how to use notes, grab a Mimeo. They're about, by the way, they're about, for a wide Mimeo, they're looking about $700. So they're pretty cheap compared to a normal interactive whiteboard. Um, the good thing is, uh, and the thing that I noticed when I used to use a Mimeo is, all my lessons are recorded. If I use a normal whiteboard, as soon as I rub it off, it's gone. This way, at the end of the unit, I can pass on the recorded notes to someone else. Next, interactive whiteboards, the real thing. So now you can actually see that these are students using an interactive whiteboard. This to me looks like a smart board, same as you've got up in the Marjorie Banks room. Now you're all doing some interactive whiteboard training during the year, so I'm not going to go into it in any great detail. Some of the problems, shadows, you can't actually see what you're writing. They're still facing the board. Is this good? Is this bad? Well, the one good thing is the content is already up there and now the students are at the board. So the teacher can step away and deliver the work, the work in a bit of a different way. Okay, moving on. Tablets. Okay, so now we're starting to get a little bit better. Back here, this is actually a tablet for a Mimeo, but we've got the board way over here. The guy can stand or the teacher can stand at the back and write. However, as he's writing, he still has to look at the board. The good thing about this one is you can pass the tablet to a student without them having to get out of their chair, and they can contribute. So it feels like so now you're actually stepping back to within the class. Last one, and kind of an interesting one, is um, a basically a display pad. Now this is an iPad here. Um, again, I'm sticking with Mac stuff just because it's what I know and it's easier. Right. So this is the display pad. So whatever I've got, I can actually mirror what I've got from the display pad, iPad, and vice versa. So if I click on here, whatever is going to be happening is on is on this one. Now they've got this one set up as an extended screen, but you can imagine if this was connected to a projector, the students can see what's on the projector. I can see what's on the on my iPad, which is exactly the same as on the screen. Now, if I'm writing, I can look at the screen, write what's on the screen. It comes up on the computer. It comes up in front of the class. So I can walk around the classroom writing my notes. I can walk to the back of the room, stand next to the students at the back, stop them swinging on the chairs. And, and ask them for what they just want to say, maybe even get them to write some notes. I can even walk out of the class and continue working. Okay, so that is my Prezi presentation. Okay, so I've just explained different tools that you can use to, for a presentation. Now, a Promethean, a Mimeo, or a tablet that you plug in are all really just big mice. Uh, a interactive whiteboards, you normally look at about six to $10,000. Now, do you really need that when you can connect your computer to a projector and just type on the screen rather than actually walking up in front of the board? Now, the reason why interactive whiteboards are so good is because they actually have lots of software. Now, this here is basically my whiteboard screen that I'm working from. I have a whole heap of tools down the side, so my mouse is just for moving and stuff, or I can draw and say hi or whatever. Now, I'm typing with the mouse, so it's quite hard. Um, drawing programs, right, whatever. So very, very, very simple program. Uh, very simple tools. Um, they can get up very complicated though. So I can actually go hand handwriting recognition. There are three real layers to this tool. Um, first layer is the background. So if I make the background black, and I try and write in black, um, it's not going to work. However, I've got you have your background layer, then you have your object layer, then you have your writing layer. So if I now move over, there's my writing. So you can actually use this as a way of actually, of engaging the students. You might have some things that appear. You might have a, um, you know, you might have things things that appear or disappear or um, the, the names come out when the students click on them, so on. There's lots of different tools. Everywhere, it's a um, online servicing or question and answer tool. Um, great for a classroom where you've got students with iPads um, like this, phones, computers, whatever, whatever device. 
Now, I'm I'm just in the question at the moment, and I want to I want to ask a new question. Create a new poll. The question is something simple like, does this work? I'm not even going to worry about question marks or anything, but I am going to turn it to a multiple choice, yes or no. Now, if I actually hit continue, what you should see is as this is being set up, I'm watching, I'm waiting, and there we go. So each of these screens have changed. You may, may be difficult to see, but each of these screens have changed to actually coincide with the, the question that's changed. <coughs> now, if I actually bring up this one, does this work? Yes, it was working here. So that student submitted that thing and it goes back to the website and comes up on my screen on my computer. Um, equally, if these guys do the same thing, oops, sorry, missed that one. All right, they're submitting their ideas, and you can see the ideas are starting to come up. This guy's a bit of a pain in the butt. It's one of those kids that always wants to buck the system. Okay, and there we go. So I've had five responses. One person's put no, the rest have put yes. Now, you can imagine if you're just gone over some, some kind of quite difficult concept, and you've actually wanted to see if the students understand. This is quite, a, so this here is quite good. It means that most of the students have understood what we've been saying, one of them says no. The good thing is that this can actually be done on any machine that can go on the internet um, will actually do this. And even, a, you can either bring up a text response or um, from a mobile phone, even an old phone. Um, you can also use Twitter, you can use lots of different things. And I'm gonna show you how to set it up for yourself. So if I log out, Okay, pricing is important because we're uni students. So it's free to sign up for 40 people. As long as you've got 40 people or less in your class, you're fine. If you've got more than that, you're in trouble anyway. So I want to sign up. Put in your full name, email, password. Simple as that. Um, and then what countries are you texting us from if you're doing that, right? I agree, sign up. And as soon as you sign up, you'll actually it'll go straight in to your poll everywhere account. Now, I suggest that if you're going to do this, try and do it with a partner because it's no good trying to set up a polling question for yourself. Um, once you get in, if you go to settings and then the poll every pollev.com page. There's also an app for this on the iPhone, there you go, um, and even the iPad. So here you can put in whatever um, question you want. Uh, or whatever um, website you want, and that will become your poll ev um, address. And so then anyone that goes to that will be able to participate in your questions. And that's poll everywhere. To finish off, I'd like to look at our discussion board, and the questions we're going to look at this week are past, present, and future. So first of all, what presentation skill uh, tools were did were you exposed to when you were at school? You know, was it Blackboard writing, and you had to use an inkwell? or was it uh, you had computers, or was it somewhere in between? Secondly, how are you going to present to your students? Because you will have your own specific way that you present. You may prefer to use a whiteboard. You may prefer, want to use an interactive whiteboard. You want to use an overhead projector, or PowerPoint, or Prezi, whatever. And finally, uh, after practicing with Poll Everywhere and Prezi, how would you integrate these tools in the classroom? Now, remember, you don't want to use them as a gimmick you actually want to be using them as a tool. So the most important thing is the stuff that you're testing or the stuff you're presenting, not the actual tool itself. And to finish off, the national professional standards we're looking at this, this week are standard one, know the students and how to learn, know the content and how to teach it, and how to plan and implement effective teaching and learning. All right, good luck.